Okay, hold on. Start. Uh, hi, Facebook Live. We are just having a little technical difficulty. Um, Delete that one. Yeah. yeah, so we just have to... What? How do we flip it? There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yay. perfect. And okay, we we're ready to go. There we go. Yes, technology All mastered. And hopefully everybody can hear us. If not, let us know. So, <clears throat> welcome back. And um, I have myself. We're just going to introduce ourselves again, just in case we do have anyone out there uh, that is new to our practice. So, my name is Angela King. And I'm an acupuncture physician, doctor of oriental medicine, and um, the clinic director and owner of Indian River Acupuncture and Functional Medicine. We've been here in the community for 14 years and going strong. And this is one of our newest associates. Uh, she's been practicing for a while, but it's new to us. She's been with the practice about two years, so I'll let Amanda introduce herself. Hello, my name is Amanda Million. I'm also acupuncture physician and doctor of oriental medicine. I uh, joined the practice, as Angela said, almost two years ago. I uh, went to school out in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so I, I'm familiar with Vero Beach, though, so I was so happy to join Indian River Acupuncture. I knew Angela's great reputation, and I've learned so much um, with the functional medicine aspect that we do here. So it's been great. Now we're doing all new new platforms, yes. new ways to so share fun. the info. Yep. So fun. Okay. So today we're going to go back to our roots and the, get back into traditional Chinese medicine. And we're going to teach you, this is going to be full of at home techniques. Okay. So this one is um, something that you're going to be able to use on a daily basis, easy at home to build your lung energy. And so that is you're obviously relevant right now in the time of COVID-19 because every it's a respiratory virus, right? First and foremost. So we want to do anything we can to strengthen our, our lung chi. We are going to try something today where there's a couple of graphics that I want you guys to be able to reference. So we're going to put those in the comments on, um, we're gonna try to do it on the chat for Zoom and we're definitely gonna do it on Facebook so that you guys can either follow along or have those references afterwards. Um, so make it a little bit easier for everybody to um, go back and see what where those points were that we were talking about that you need to do your acupressure for or your moxa or whatever. Okay, so some basic traditional, TCM is traditional Chinese medicine, and that is what we were both trained in. So we're gonna start with some basics about acupoints and meridian therapy, or meridians and organ systems and how they function so that we can build this foundation so that when we get to the lung piece of it, you guys will understand uh, more about why these techniques work and how they work. Okay, so. There are 12, meridians are like the channels through which the chi or energy flows in your body, okay? So we like to think of it as a garden hose analogy. So if you think of a garden hose, right, you're, the hose itself is the vessel through which the water flows. And if it, that garden hose gets a kink in it, right, you can have the water turned on, but it's kind of just dripping out the other end. That's what happens when, in, when we have uh, dysfunction in our bodies. It's like that kink garden hose. And so acupuncture, where you can come in the office and get a treatment, is really efficient at unkinking those blockages and allowing the, the free flow of chi to move through your body again. But right now, because we are uh, stuck on quarantine mode still, we have to use some different techniques at home that are just as efficient as um, as acupuncture uh, because they can be done more often they can be done more frequently right mm -hmm. so acupuncture is amazing it's so strong so effective um, but acupressure moxa all these other things can be done more frequently so you're getting the benefit over and over again okay and overall we call that cultivating your chi for overall yes. wellness for longevity to be able to just function at our yes. best so there's 12 of these meridians pathways in the body, these channels through which the chi flow, and there's two what we call extraordinary meridians. The meridians are named after their, uh, well, they have a Chinese name, and then they have a, um, a organ system name. So you may hear, we'll say the lung meridian, the stomach meridian, the gallbladder meridian, the liver meridian. They're named after their organ pair, but they also have a name uh, like Tai Yin, Tai Yang, um, Jueyin, Xiaoyin, Xiaoyang, all of that. So we were going to stick with naming them by their their uh, lung, their organ association today, because we want to particularly focus on building the lung energy. 
Okay, so acupuncture points, these are the points on the body where the chi is easily, it, 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 it comes together, right? And you can tap into it and influence it easily at these points, whether that be through moxa, acupressure, or acupuncture. So the, there's over 400 acupuncture points on the body, and most are located um, on the limbs, on the trunk and torso, the back, the legs, the feet, but also on the ears and the scalp. So there are plenty of acupuncture points to choose from. We need to know how to put them together to make a, an appropriate treatment. So what is, what is chi exactly? Well, from our oriental medicine standpoint, chi is the, the energy that enlivens or animates the body, right? So think about it like this. It, it's, if we have us, any of you, we're all sitting here living, breathing today, and we have a person who is not alive, corpse. okay? A corpse, corpse sounds like a terrible word, but let's just say that, right? What really is the difference? We still have all the same organs, all the same organs. Now, maybe this person has some disease in their organs, that's absolutely true, but what happened at the end of the day? What happened? The, 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 the chi that made that heart beat, the chi that made the brain send those electrical impulses, that's that energy of the body that's no longer there, right? So chi is really that force, that animating and enlivening force that brings the body to life and sustains life. Okay, so in this chi, it needs to flow freely for optimal health, right? It needs to it needs to flow freely, and we have certain ways that we can influence that. Well, let's first let me go to one other point I wanted to make about chi. We have a we have two main kinds of chi in the body. We have our inherited chi or prenatal chi, they might call it. Okay. And that is uh, from the kidney energy, which dominates development and reproduction. And that really is what you get from your parents. Okay, it's an in inherited chi. So, and the strength of, and vitality of that inherited chi depends also upon the state of uh, health of your parents at the time that you were conceived and as your mother was carrying you. So that type of energy, they say, cannot really be replaced or you can't really gain more right. of it, right? It's, it's your trust fund. And when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So you have a great amount of it and we want to conserve it, hold right. on to it, and then build onto it if possible, which right. we it's can do. More, yeah, it's more about doing the right things, eating healthy, taking mm -hmm. care of yourself to conserve that chi, mm -hmm. um, but you can't necessarily gain more of it, okay? Mm -hmm. The type of chi, though, that you can influence more is called your acquired chi. So that chi is more associated with the organ systems of the spleen and stomach energy, okay? And the spleen and stomach energy are the energy that transforms the food and drink that you take in into usable forms of energy for your body, right? So you might hear, let me pause here, you might hear say the, the, the term spleen energy. They really, we know very well that in Western medicine, you know, physiology, the spleen has nothing to do with digestion, okay? But in Chinese medicine, they named it the spleen energy. People, the ancients, they really think they were talking more about like the pancreas because the location is so close and the pancreas is obviously intimately involved in digestion from secreting enzymes, regulating blood sugar, that sort of thing, or insulin. Um, so you want to go back you want to go back to the concept that you can influence your chi through food and that's why we've included some food therapy tips at the end of the presentation today all things that you can do to cultivate like amanda said to cultivate and build that chi okay so chi has certain functions in the body it circulates okay so it's responsible for circulation of nutrients chi also we say in chinese medicine that chi carries the blood so chi helps that blood to move it's responsible for uh the the enlivening force that makes that energy move um, throughout the body. It also warms the body. So the body needs to maintain a certain temperature, right? So the chi, uh, the chi helps to warm that body, warm the skin, the muscle layers. That's another function of chi. It also protects and defends. And this is where we're going to talk about it today uh, relative to the lung chi. So you have a certain type of chi called wei chi. 
W E I Wei Chi. And the, um, the lung energy is really responsible for governing that. And the Wei Chi is what we might think of as analogous to our immune system. It's also called defensive Chi. Defensive, so you can think yes. About wei Chi, defensive Chi, your, your first line of defense. So when that Wei Chi is strong, then the pathogen can't come inside and invade, right? So there's a lot of things in, in Chinese medicine about infectious disease or acute disease, right? It's, it's about A, the strength of your internal constitution and the strength of your Wei Qi to be able to defend against internal pathogens, external pathogens. It's also about the, the strength or the virulence of that particular pathogen, right? So you can have different combinations. You can have a strong pathogen and a strong Wei Qi and you may be able to fight that off. You might have a strong pathogen and a weak chi, the pathogen's gonna be invading much more easily, right? So there's varying, there's, there, you could have a weak pathogen, strong chi, you're definitely gonna be able to overcome that. So there's all these mixes of how these pathogens can, from a Chinese medical perspective, kind of get in our body and make us sick. So we know as far as the SARS Corona uh, 2 virus, that this is a very strong pathogen. Right, it is a strong pathogen. It has a lot of potential for uh, virulence and to do a lot of damage in the body. Okay, so we also uh, want to say that we want to mention the organ systems. So in Chinese medicine, there's a concept called the Zong Fu, and this is how we group our organ systems together. And you guys have probably all, almost all of you, have heard of the five elements. So maybe you've heard of of fire, earth, metal, water, and wood, or sometimes air instead of metal, right? These are the five elements. And our organ systems, the Zongfu, are grouped into these five elements. So, so let me give you an example. We'll start with fire. The fire element is pertains to the heart and small intestine organs, okay? And the earth element pertains to the spleen and stomach organs. The metal element pertains to the lung and large intestine, and the water element is the kidney and urinary bladder, and lastly, the wood element is the liver and gallbladder. So when you talk about that interior, exterior pair of organs, this is how we say in Chinese medicine, let's go straight to the lung since that's the topic for today. So the lung is paired with the large intestine. The lung is the zong organ, the large intestine is the foo organ, okay? So foo organs really have a lesser role um, according in Chinese medicine principle, right? They're hollow organs, every single one of them, right? The, um, the small intestine, the stomach, the large intestine, the urinary bladder, and the gallbladder, they're all hollow organs. So their job is to receive, store, and empty, okay? So that's what the, and interestingly enough, with the metal element, when you have your lung and large intestine paired together, this is no surprise that COVID-19 um, can affect the GI tract because in Chinese medicine, you see a direct correlation between the lung energy and the large intestine energy. So these organ systems also have a season they have a taste that they're most associated with. They have a certain taste. They have a color. They have a group of emotions that are most commonly associated with them. Direction, sound, direction, smell, smell so time of day. Time we of have day. the Chinese mm -hmm. clock. When, when that energy strengthens or lowers. Lowers, mm -hmm. right. When and, you, and when you have the most chance to influence the energy of that as well, right? I know so, some practitioners that actually do their treatments according to the time of day, day. so they can strengthen the energy. It's very Although it's hard to get the ones where you're sleeping at night. Hard but, to do. <laughs> so the season of the metal element is the fall, okay? The autumn or the fall. So lung and, and uh, lung energy is what we really need to nourish in the fall because when we do that, according to Chinese medicine principles, we're strengthening our Wei Qi, our defensive Qi, and we have more resistance to pathogens that typically arise during those winter months. Uh, typically influenza, but now we have sars cov 2 Okay. So we often, we want to next talk about what the lung organ system is responsible for according to Chinese medicine. So we say that it dominates descending and dispersing. So when you take a deep breath in, the lung chi is supposed to descend, okay? So the lung chi moves downward and then it has to be grasped, we call it grasping or rooting from the kidney chi. So the kidney chi has to anchor that breath 
and pull that chi downward and then it goes back up to the lungs for dissemination throughout the rest of the vital organs. So when, then this is just how Chinese medicine explains it. And it also brings water and nourishes um, the rest of the organs and gives it the, the fluids we call it in Chinese medicine that it needs. So what happens when that isn't working properly? Well, that's why you would get cough or wheezing or shortness of breath, right? So um, the cough is the rebellion, we say rebellion, rebellious chi, right? Mm -hmm. It's the rebellion of the lung chi. It's the chi oh, coming yeah. up mm -hmm. instead of going down. Shortness of breath, same thing. And so when we talk about the um, asthma allergies, the, that sort of thing, also um, when we talk about uh, water, it sounds weird to think about water associated with the lungs, but when you think of it like that, when that water, when that, think of it like fluids, not water that you're drinking, but fluids, when those fluids stagnate, mm -hmm. then you can get phlegm, right? Mm -hmm. And phlegm is this sticky, viscous mucus mm -hmm. um, that you don't want in your lungs, right? Or in your sinuses, right? Or even edema is associated in Chinese medicine. Um, that's swelling, water retention is associated with like energy stagnation in the lung, right? So also when the lung energy isn't working properly, you're going to catch colds easily. And um, also we, it, the lung energy is talking about the upper and lower respiratory tract in Chinese medicine. So we say that it opens into the nose and it connects with the throat. So again, just all the areas that when we say lung energy, it's like, what is that actually influencing in the body according to Chinese medicine principles, okay? And then since we mentioned um, emotions, grief and sadness and senses of loss or suffering are all associated and can, can affect the lung energy. So it's interesting that during this time, we may feel more disconnected from our, our, our friends, we may feel a, a loss, right? We may feel a loss of our business or a loss of our job, or maybe someone out there has had someone that they actually have lost to mm -hmm. um, to COVID-19, right? It's a loss of structure, A right? loss of structure, a Things. loss of normalcy, normalcy. <laughs> right? I mean, just really a loss of normalcy. <clears throat> so we're experiencing that. And as we grieve that in our own ways, that's also can, you know, if we don't move through that, that can impact the lung energy mm -hmm. and, and actually weaken it. So we do want to take all of this into consideration um, in order to help strengthen our, our lung energy. Okay, so we're gonna turn it over to Amanda to talk about the Qigong, and she's gonna demonstrate a couple of simple techniques that you can do at home mm -hmm. um, that help uh, move the lung energy through the meridians. Mm -hmm. Qigong is amazing practice. It's a form of moving meditation. Um, Qigong and Tai Chi are both the first branch of Chinese medicine. It's something we can do on a daily basis to help, as we've been saying, strengthen or cultivate that Qi. I always like to tell my patients, if we are cultivating and strengthening our chi on a regular basis, then if and when life throws us a mental, emotional, physical trauma of some sort, or COVID, we are a little bit more prepared to handle that. We won't be as susceptible to the disease. We will able to work through it a little bit easier, help our friends and family through it, and recover from something that much faster. So Qigong is very important. Um, and you can specify Qigong. It's a combination of breath work and movement and intention to help to strengthen um, the energy of a certain channel, a meridian, or of a specific organ system. So again, we're gonna focus on the lung energy. Um, and I'll show you just a little stretch that you can do, and then we can add some movement to it. So the lung meridian, um, and I think we had said we're going to do some Oh yes, sharing. we're going to put a something. link uh, in the comments okay. um, for the lung meridian so you guys can reference this later mm -hmm. or you can Google on your you own. You can Google. Yeah. So the lung channel runs approximately from when you roll your shoulder in, there's a little bit of a dip below the clavicle. This is lung one, um, the anterior deltoid triangle there. And it runs down the um, medial aspect of your arm into the tip of your thumb, the radial side of your thumb. So if you think about it like this, if we just open up our arms, we're already stretching, stretching and lengthening through those muscles and through the meridian itself. Now, if we rotate those thumbs a little bit back away from us, we're going to strengthen that and lengthen it a little bit more so. You can take a few deep breaths with this and just feel that expansion through your lungs. You can let your neck hang back a little bit. Again, that's going to open up through the throat. connecting parts of the mm -hmm. throat and all of that. Okay. So there's just a little bit there and just hang out in this position for whatever's comfortable or you can rest 
do it a few different times, get some repetition in there. Um, and then another way that we can activate that channel is to add some topodiment to it, right? So we can just kind of work a little bit of tapping or pressure along and here, consolidate that through the chest, move it down the other side, something like that with whatever pressure is comfortable for you along with some nice deep breaths. And again, intention that we are strengthening um, our lung system, we are benefiting our health just right here in the moment. That in itself is very empowering. It feels great to know that you're doing something right now to help your resistance. Um, and then what else are we going to do? Oh, this one I recommend a lot. And I'm going to say that Tracy and Amanda and maybe even Joey and already know this one, but here we go. So you take a little, um, I like to call it a bird beak. Um, just put all of your fingers together and make sort of a, a point. And then you're going to go back to that lung one, lung one cross. You're gonna take a nice deep breath in and you're gonna tap with a firm pressure, whatever's comfortable, don't hurt yourself, but a little bit of pressure, 39 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. And when you get to 39, you're gonna gently tuck your neck and just <coughs> force yourself to cough, just a gentle bit. It's going to help to expand and contract your lungs force things through those bronchioles and push any stagnant fluid, we've talked about stagnant energy, up and out. And you can repeat that again three times. So breath in, tapping with a little bird beak at lung one, 39 times. And then tuck <coughs> and cough. And I uh, recommend that you do that sequence three times. I think that's, awesome. that's our Qigong for the lung. Okay, right. so again, just some simple techniques that you can do at home to help yourself um, while you're, you know, just having hanging out, time. having nothing else to do, right? Yeah, I was so, going to say also that I, I think I mentioned to you when we were talking about this talk is that uh, a, a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, if you were to go see a doctor in China, right, they're going to actually give you a prescription mm, for Qigong, Qigong along with your along with your herbs, along with your acupuncture points. They're going to say this particular Qigong sequence. There's a thousand of them, just like yoga. There's one for insomnia. There's one for you know better um, gut health. There, there's different uh, qigongs for kidney strengthening. All those different forms. So you might get an actual prescription that says do this particular form of qigong three times a day. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we were going to recommend that yeah we do this three times a week. If you could do this every day, it'd be even better. Yeah, but, every you know, day would be great if you few can times a week, make every it other fit day. your schedule, mm -hmm. right? Really so good. also in Chinese medicine, or, or I should say oriental medicine in general, there are um, multiple branches of oriental medicine and Qigong is at the top. Actually, it's, it's listed in efficacy above acupuncture because of this fact that you can do it every day on your own and cultivate your own chi, mm -hmm. right? Whereas acupuncture, you have to come in and someone else has to do that for you. So the, the chi gong is one of those things with the meditation that you can do on your own to help yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Acupressure. That's also something you can do on your own. So, um, Again, what we, we look for in this is the repetition of it. And this is something simple that if you can learn this little sequence that I'm going to teach you right now, this is something that you can do if you happen to just be, you know, binging something on Netflix or, you know, whatever, right? You can incorporate this acupressure while you're um, into your routine. Okay. So we're going to look at first some points that strengthen the lung energy. And this is where you can reference that diagram um, if you can't quite get what I'm showing you. So the name of this particular point, um, we're going to go with the, the, the organ names of the points. They have Chinese names and English translations, but we're just going to go with numerical sequence because it's going to be easier for you to find it later on your chart. Okay. So this is, um, we're going to start with lung nine, lung nine on, and these are bilateral points. So meaning they're on both sides of the body. Okay. So lung nine, if you have your hand up here, it's just in the depression, just below the base of the thumb on the radial side of the body. So lung nine is what we call the Yuan source point on the particular, every meridian has a Yuan source point. It's the source of what we call the original Chi. So it's the, it's the best point on that meridian to really build the energy um, and to build the Chi. So you're going to, you can rub, you know, just a gentle pressure. If you can go in a clockwise motion, that's good because you're tonifying or strengthening that lung energy. Okay. So that's lung nine. And then we're going to move to RIN 17 or CV 17, conception vessel 17. Um, and that's going to be in the center of the chest 
at the level of the fourth intercostal space. So that's like four spaces where you feel the spaces in between your ribs. But if you basically just aim for the center of your chest, you're gonna be doing just fine, okay? And you can just rub there in a clockwise motion. This uh, point helps what we call expand the chi of the chest. So it helps expand the chi, it helps um, build up that energy of the lungs, helps you get a deep breath, helps the chi flow and move through the chest better. So you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna move down to the other side. So coming, actually, you're gonna go down to uh, the other side of your, and do your lung nine on the other side. And then on that side, we're gonna move down to two points on the leg. Okay, so these are gonna be a little harder to demonstrate, but stomach 36, is a, a point that has much influence on the body um, in according to Chinese medicine. It's used for so many different things. And um, one of them is to build the immune system or that Wei Qi. So you're going to take your knee, if you can see me. Oh my God, leg? goodness. Okay, we can use her leg. Her leg. Um, kind of? Yeah. Sure. So right there, you're gonna take the eye of the knee, there'll be a little depression right here, four fingers down. And if you've come at it this way, you'll feel the tibia and you'll feel it curve around. And right where it curves around, you're gonna feel a depression right there, right off that curve. And that's also equal to about four fingers below the depression in the kneecap right there. Okay, so that point is stomach 36. Very powerful point. So you're gonna rub that. Not done with my, oh, not done, not done with, with your leg. leg. Okay, so um, you're gonna rub that point and then you're gonna go down to a point called kidney three. So kidney three is also the yuan source point on the kidney channel, okay? So why the kidneys? Because if you remember back, what I said earlier is that the kidney energy has to grasp or root the, uh, the inhalation of the breath. And so we're gonna, we wanna strengthen the function of the kidney too. This is a very simple point to find, okay? So the point is, mm -hmm. inside. inside. Yeah, where are we going? This way. Okay. Just trying to find a good view. So, for you guys. all right. So you've got your your the tip of your ankle, your medial malleolus. Okay. So you've got the tip of the ankle right here, and you'll see the you'll feel the Achilles tendon right back, straight at the same level as the tip of your ankle. You'll feel the Achilles tendon. So now what you're going to do is come divide that distance in half and press right in that little depression right there, okay? That is kidney three. So you're gonna, you're gonna rub that point and then you'll move from that side, you'll do kidney three on the next side, on the other side, you'll move up to that stomach 36 point just below the knee and you can, that's a complete circuit of Lovely. energy around the body, right? Mm -hmm. So we're hitting the lung energy, we're hitting the kidneys, we're hitting the mm -hmm. chest chi. Now, I'm gonna say two more things. If you get a cough, so this is more of a strengthening and building. If you get a cough, you're gonna to wanna to rub a different point. You're gonna to wanna, to, doing that lung one, just at the angle sort of where your clavicle, um, the depression right here, just in, in front of the shoulder and down a couple fingers right here, that's lung one. It's usually tender on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, surprisingly, it can be tender when you push in there. So you can rub that on both sides, the same area where Amanda was doing the Qigong. And then um, this other point is called lung seven. So it's on the radial side here, but it's easier to locate with your hand more in this position. And you'll feel this bump here on the wrist. That's the styloid part process of the wrist. So you'll feel that bump and, and sort of right over the bump, if you come up this way, away from your fingers, you come up this way, um, you'll feel a depression in between two tendons right there. And that depression is lung seven. So that is also a really good point for, um, for cough, right? Because it, it helps uh, rebellious lung chi. Um, so we're gonna put that link there so you guys can see that lung meridian graphic or just Google lung meridian Chinese medicine and you'll find a graphic that will help you remember where those points are, okay? So let's move on to moxa. Oh yes, moxa. So we're gonna cover moxa and food therapy okay. next and then we'll wrap it up. Yes. So moxibustion is the art of burning a, an herb over the acupressure points. The herb itself is called ayé. 
um, in pinyon or it's mugwort in Latin. And this is what the herb looks like when it's in its raw form. We use it several different ways. Um, they say in China, if you can't do it with moxibustion, you can't do it with acupuncture. So it is very effective um, for warming those channels, for again, building the strength of them, um, for increasing the synovial fluid, what else does it do? Moxa does all the things that yeah, acupuncture warms does. The, yeah, warms, warms, opens the channels. Dispels um, builds, cold builds as well. Blood. Yeah. Very, very good for warming. Dispels cold. We say, like, for example, though, what that might reference, because it sounds mm -hmm. funny to say that, though, mm -hmm. say a woman is struggling with infertility. Um, in Chinese medicine, we could have a possible diagnosis that she has cold in the uterus, okay? So when we, uh, we use moxa a lot in, ter in uh, fertility treatments mm -hmm. to dispel that cold and warm the uterus. So mm -hmm. that would be one way that mm -hmm. we have cold in our bodies, it right. sounds. But right. this, is, this is how to translate that into mm -hmm. real life. Yeah, that's perfect. And so we use the moxibustion um, as a full treatment in itself, and specifically we're gonna show you some points that will help to build the immunity, and also you can just regulate that energy of the organ system or of the channel itself that might be out of balance. Um, so again, when it's in its loose form, I never quite know what to say it looks like, but this is it. Um, it's, it's very kind of its, its own fluffy, thing, it's very fluffy. Powdery. Like almost like lint, sort of, but yeah. very therapeutic lint. Okay, so this is um, wakasa, and then there's also a gold moxa, so there's a little bit difference in the quality um, of where they're being cultivated from and maybe just the um, process of how they get get to these different forms. And then there's also a stick on moxa, which is this loose um, herb compressed into a little stick on form. And you can just unstick that, put it on whichever point you wanna use. We'll just throw probably four up there. And then you would light this and it burns down. It can be a little uncomfortable as it burns all the way down. So we don't recommend this for patients on the reg. This is what I'm doing at home. This is another form of moxa that you can use. But something that's a little bit more accessible for all of our patients, and we recommend this often, is to use this moxa stick. So this is that compressed herb, um, and it is a smokeless form of moxa, which is great. It does have a small little bit of odor to it, but I will tell you that the loose moxa and the the little stick on moxa, very, very strong odor, very smoky. So very this is actually, right. this is much better indicated for you guys at home. And we're just gonna, um, you can use a, a candle to light this, um, or you can use one of these long lighters. I recommend a candle. Um, and you wanna kind of think of it as an incense stick or a cigar. You wanna sort of roll it around and make sure that it's got a nice glow all around. So we're gonna warm this stick and then we're gonna um, wave it over the acupressure points to even further build that energy and to strengthen and to warm and to move things in that energy system. So, good. so and you, you can also take like, if you have a pair of tweezers mm -hmm. or just a slight to just scrape the, uh, the ash. ash so that it doesn't build up and fall mm -hmm. on you because mm -hmm. it can burn you if that happens, right? So we have this handy little thing like this that works, but yeah, you'll want to use something, um, tweezers, yeah, just dad, something light, that can just- A very light scraping, right? Because you don't want to do it too much or you'll you'll drop the end of it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it takes a couple minutes just to get that lit and then you never want to touch your skin. Never ever actually touch your skin. There are different forms of this moxa that are called direct scarring moxa and they do that in Korea. We don't want to do that here. And then they do um, a warm needling where you can use the raw um, herb on the end of the needle, which is a really powerful treatment. Um, but you never want to touch your skin with the herb um, or with this stick. So you want to get about, um, use your hand. Sure. About a finger uh, finger width away from the skin that you're going for. So I'm going for LI4, um, large intestine 4. It's connected to the lung, as we said, and the metal element. And so we're just going to do what's called sparrow pecking. So it's a getting close to the point, again, about a finger width away from it, and then pulling back. And then getting close and pulling back. And Angela will start to feel this get a little bit warm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a, quite a bit of distance from her, uh, from her hand, from her skin, but I can still feel that warming. It's a very subtle warmth. And the more you do it, meaning you do a few rounds of the sparrow pecking, um, then you'll move on to another point and then you come back and you'll start to feel that get warmer more quickly and it will retain that heat for longer. Um, so, oh, we had a few points in particular that we're gonna show you to do the moxibustion on. Um, we already showed stomach 36. Mm -hmm. So stomach 36 is one of those points that you're gonna do. Um, and I recommend you can do this every day, but again, if you can get it in a few times a week, it's gonna be wonderful for you. So stomach 36, and then a couple others on that conception vessel line. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, that Ren channel or the conception vessel that Angela had talked about. So we're going to just go to your belly button and you're going to do um, about a full hand's breadth 
above your navel, or you can kind of, from your navel to where your ribs come together, they sort of wing in about half that distance, okay, about right there, or another way to find it is to just take one full hand breath from your navel and go up, roll the edge of your pinky, right, right along the top of your belly button, and then right where your thumb ends is gonna be approximately half that distance between your belly button and the xiphi sternal joint or where those ribs come together, okay? So that's CV12, conception vessel 12, Then we also wanna show you CV6 or conception vessel six, which is gonna be approximately two finger breaths below the navel or below the belly button, okay? And that's right on the midline, so right central there. Those two points. So and so you would make mm -hmm. like a circuit, mm -hmm. right, with those points, like how we were doing the circuit with the acupressure, with the moxa, you would do a circuit like that. You would do stomach 36 on both sides and then come up to REN 6 and then REN 12. REN and CV are the same thing, just different schools teach the names a little bit differently. So I have a habit of saying REN more often than concession vessel. Um, but anyway, so you're going to do that circuit and you're going to stay on that point. We, we were always taught, you know, take as much heat as you can before it starts to feel like it's too hot, right? You'll know, like right at that little edge before it gets too hot, that's when you're going to move it on to the next point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and you're going to want to do that whole cycle until you've reached about 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 10 minutes. and yeah. about 10 minutes. So 10 minutes a day, three times a week would be a great um, a, a moxibustion mm -hmm. uh, prescription to help build this lung energy, build your chi, mm -hmm. um, and strengthen the, the, the energy of the kidneys as well, which is important, as we talked about, for mm -hmm. grasping that inhalation of chi and bringing it downward. And those three particular points were actually recommended by John Chen, who we mentioned last week, um, the herbal recognized authority in herbal medicine and Western pharmacology. So he did an incredible webinar and he specifically pointed out these Those three points, points for 10 minutes with moxibustion in sequence. So yeah, yep. it's great. Okay. So lastly, we're going to talk about Chinese food therapy. Okay. And so Chinese food therapy is about the energetics of food, right? It's not about calories. It's not about macronutrients. It's not about a specific diet. It's not about um, it, it's not about those types of things. It's about the energetics of food and what that particular food does when you consume it. How does it affect the chi of your body? What does it do to the chi? What does it do to the blood? Um, and this is Chinese medicine energetics. So we're gonna post a link um, of a really good article um, that's gonna give you a lot of references for all the organ systems of the body and what you can do to build the chi of each of those. Um, but we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about the lungs specifically, but we also want you to know too that not everybody needs to build their chi. Some people need to reduce their chi, right? And so, and there's different patterns of disharmony or different ways in which an organ system can be out of balance according to Chinese medicine, right? So that's important to recognize. And that's where an individual prescription would um, come in more handy. Because if you have, let's say, stagnant um, liver chi or liver fire, right? You wouldn't want to build your liver chi. It's already too much. So you would need to, to look at the um, recommendations for um, having like a liver fire or a liver yang rising versus building the chi. So, and the same thing with the lung, you can have a lung yin deficiency. You can have lung chi deficiency. Um, there's just different ways that that lung energy can be off. So you want, you need to know what your Chinese medical diagnosis is in order to really understand how to completely eat properly for your particular situation. But we're going to give some basic lung support, right? So at the very basic, these are foods that you can add into your diet that help support the lung energy. So in the vegetable category, we've got things like asparagus, carrots, cauliflower. Oh, so the lungs uh, is acrid, right? So you want, so this is why you're gonna hear things like horseradish, mustard greens, radishes. They, they have an acrid property according to Chinese medicine and that supports the lung energy. So also scallions, leeks and onions, anything in that family is very good for the lungs. Watercress, um, water chestnuts, Interestingly, all of these are very supportive to the lung energy in terms of vegetables. For your root vegetables, your sweet potatoes and yams are going to nourish the lung. And in fruits, grapes, pears, peaches, and tangerines are most recommended. 
For legume category, black beans and garbanzos or chickpeas are most recommended to help again support the, the function of the lung energy. For nuts, you only want to stick with almonds, almond butter, almond milk, or walnuts. These are particularly nourishing for the lung energy. And then for grains, oats are very nourishing and rice or sweet rice is also recommended for the lungs. And then in spices, again, these have that sort of acrid, um, you know, flavor to them, right? So they're very supportive for the lung energy. So things like chili, uh, so this is spices, curry, garlic, pepper, and then ginger or ginger tea or other kinds of spice teas. So I know like in, I think even in Publix now, you can get like yogi tea, it's mm -hmm. called. That's a good um, spice tea that's good for uh, the lung energy. What you want to avoid specifically, okay? Remember how we talked about the lung, um, the water needing, you don't want that stagnation of fluids, right? We don't want phlegm, we don't want mucus, we don't want that. So we want to avoid foods that form phlegm easily and are cold natured. Things like dairy, unfortunately, for cheese addicts out there, not good for the lung energy, okay? Oily and fatty foods, uh, sugar, don't want to do that either. And these are just good recommendations for general immune health at this time. But they're also, this is exactly what Chinese medicine would tell you as well. Okay. So you want to also minimize cold foods, foods that are too cold natured. And that does include like ice and smoothies and really cold drinks. You want to drink your, your drinks more at room temperature, but it also includes things like too many raw salads. So you don't want to over consume salads because in Chinese medicine, it's very cold in nature and the lung um, takes on that property. So think about, we said it's the metal element, right? So when you think about it being the metal element, think about metal being such a good conductor, right? I mean, it's it metal gets cold very quickly mm -hmm. or it can heat up very quickly. So it takes on that property and that's no different than your lungs. So you don't want foods that are too cold because that can injure the lung energy. It also stagnates when so we talked about the yeah, earth element. So the first right? thing that goes in your, your, your stomach and your body are a certain temperature. So we're putting in cold fluids and liquids and salads and raw things like that. It's so much more energy for your body to first have to warm it up and then break it down. So you can think about it like that too. If we're trying to build and conserve our energy, that's just one little thing that can, that can do that. Yes. <laughs> So we want to wrap it up by, um, if anyone has any questions, perhaps that they want to type into the Zoom chat or um, the uh, comments on Facebook, if anybody has any questions, we're certainly um, going to try to answer them the best we can if anyone has a question. Um, also, again, what we can do through telehealth would be individual consults to assess your constitution, what organ systems are most out of balance for you so that you could do uh, more specific acupressure, more specific Qigong, more specific food therapy if that's of interest to you. Um, we will be back on Saturday morning. I'll have Dr. Christine Nielsen back with me then. And we're going to talk about one thing, uh, a therapy, a technique that's really near and dear to my heart, which is uh, NET, neuroemotional technique. Um, and we're gonna give you at home, another at home uh, tool that you can use that will help manage these emotions when you're just feeling overwhelmed or frustrated, or maybe you don't even know exactly what it is that you're feeling, but we're gonna talk to you about this at home technique, why it works, how it works, and um, talk to you about neuroemotional technique. So we will be back at 11 again on Saturday morning. We're posting all of these videos to our new YouTube channel, which is under Indian River Acupuncture and Functional Medicine. If anyone wants to catch the play outside of, you know, scrolling again on Facebook, it'll still be there. Um, we would love for you guys to share the video if you're on Facebook um, and just to help us reach other people that might need to or could benefit from this information. And the last thing we wanted to say is if there's any, we have our talks basically planned through the month of May. We're gonna move into gut health, as we mentioned before, which is a super important topic and very relevant to the immune system. Um, but if there are other topics that any of you guys out there are interested in hearing about, send us a message, send us an email, give us a call, um, whatever it is, or put it in the comments on Facebook and we are happy to uh, do our best to oblige that as well, so. 
Thank you. Nice. And thank you. Um, I thank don't you. see any questions today. Mm -hmm. So I think we're good. Everyone have a wonderful day and we hope to see you back on Saturday. Thanks for tuning in.